Hi, my name is Sarah Rogers and I'm going to be talking to you today about my capstone project that I did for Washington State University in the Psych 265 course for fall semester 2017. So I chose my capstone project on racial bias in the war on drugs. And there are several reasons why I chose this and why I have an interest in it. Um, my future educational goals are going to be to work with chemical dependency and domestic violence survivors. And I don't um, necessarily think that there's just a racial bias with the war on drugs, but also uh, a financial one. It's uh, a racial component, but also a poverty component. And when um, the war on drugs came out, it was announced by Nixon, um, poor neighborhoods, uh, below income or low income families were definitely targeted and still are today. Now the reason that I chose this one um, is not just because of an interest, but because I see it every day in my daily life. I am um, I work for a general crime, domestic violence and sexual assault advocacy center. I'm a shelter manager and a domestic violence advocate. And often um, there is an addiction component when you meet with these women who, or men um, who have survived domestic violence for various reasons. Um, women get assaulted, they go to the doctor, they get pain meds for their broken bones, they get hooked, whatever. It all, it all kind of comes together. But what I see a lot of is um, women of every shape, size, and color coming in, paying their debt to society, and are... Um, given mandatory maximums and minimum prison sentences or jail sentences uh, a year, six months to a year for possession, personal possession, um, lengthier times after after one or more offense. Um, and I think that's uh, astonishing in a negative way. So when they come to me and I need to help them find housing or jobs or get their kids back, um, or just need to enter into food stamps and public services, they can't because they have a record. And this is very frustrating for me, especially since um, the women that come to me often are really determined to make a change and can't because as soon as they come out of prison or jail, they're knocked back down. Nobody will hire them. Nobody will house them. Public services are not available to them. So they return right back to drug activity or something that makes them feel good. In my opinion, we shouldn't be treating um, addiction as a criminalization. We should be treating addiction as a, a public health issue. And we should help these men and women um, break free of their addiction with counseling, um, uh, you know, treat it phys physically, you know, with medicines and doctors, and uh, with mental health programs. Instead, we lock them up for however long, give them no, no coping skills and no tools, and send them back out on the streets to, uh, of course, re-offend, and then this is what their life becomes. It becomes a cycle. Um, uh, I read three really great books over the summer. The first was Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson. The second was um, uh, The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander, and the third um, what's called Chasing the Scream by John Harry, um, The First and Last Days of the War on Drugs. Um, it's a really wonderful book. Uh, Billy Holiday had a wonderful quote in it. Uh, Southern trees bear strange fruit, blood on the leaves, and blood on the root. That's by Billy Holiday. Um, and this is when this all really starts. I suggest reading any of those books. But another reason that I did this paper was because I know that if we we're to change our, our criminal system, our, our, our social systems, or remove this uh, racial caste we have that is in our laws, we have to start the conversation. So that's what this paper was, and that's what this synapse is, is just starting that conversation. Um, if I have time, I'm going to read a quick quote from my paper. This is from um, John Ehrlichman. He was a president's aide um, in 1968 when Nixon was voted into presidency. You want to know what this was really all about. The Nixon campaign in 1968 and the Nixon White House after that had two enemies, the anti-war left and the black people. You understand what I'm saying. We knew we couldn't make it illegal to be either anti-war or black, but by getting the public to associate the hippies with marijuana and blacks with heroin and then criminalizing both heavily, 
We could disrupt the communities. We could arrest their leaders, raid their homes, break up their meetings, and vilify them night after night on the evening news. Did we know that we were lying about the drugs? Of course we did. I hope you enjoyed the synapse and my paper. You guys have a great day.